In this module, we're going to be looking into attachment hiding, which is a hiding patterns we develop when our attachment need is not met. It's part four of 12 of our Hiding from Love series. You know, attachment starts when we're born. The need that we have in our soul is designed by God. It's, it's important to Him. What if this need for attachment is a deficit in your life and you find yourself isolated emotionally and relationally from others? So what do we do when that need is not met? And sometimes it's not met from relational hurts that are not healed. Or maybe you've never experienced it. So what do we do? Well, we hide. In order to compensate for the attachment need not being met, we develop hiding patterns, which are helpful to protect us from further hurts and damage, but it also can be harmful if left in place for a long time. You know, when there is a relational hurt, the purpose of hiding is to temporarily withdraw so that the heart can regroup itself to reattach with safe, loving people. After a long time, if this, if this does not occur, then isolation sets in, which can lead to believing the lie that the need to attach no longer exists. In other words, we begin living as if we do not have needs, and we don't need to be attached to anyone. Let's look at three hiding patterns that may exist in attachment deficit people. First one is devaluation hiding pattern. In this hiding pattern, we don't believe that caring people exist, or we don't believe that we actually have a need to be cared for. It makes our loneliness seem less painful. George never experienced a serious failure in his life. Perfect picture of confidence. Whenever he felt the need for his wife to comfort him, he became frightened of the feelings and reacted by distancing himself from her, by becoming sarcastic and biting toward her, which hurt her. After many years, George's wife divorced him. He thought, she never cared in the first place, and I was never in love with her either. He still believed his can-do attitude would pull him through by looking on the bright side of his situation. His perceived omnipotence kept him from true intimacy with God and others. Through safe and caring relationships, George began feeling deep hurt over his wife's abandonment and his deep longing for her love returned to him. It hurt George more, but it was a critical turning point in his healing process. The safe relationships allowed George to begin grieving. Slowly, he let go of the lost relationship, which left room in his heart to build new relationships. You know, if you care for the attachment deficit person, it can be difficult and frustrating because the person may not believe that you truly care. The devaluation has helped the attachment deficit person survive. Well, how valuable are you to God? Let's read in Luke 12, 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. You know, your value is not calculated based on money, talent, skills, or other people's appreciation of you. It's not your to-do list. It's not your appearance. It's not your successes or your failures. It's not your grades. It's not your social media image. God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made in Psalm 139 verse 14. He risked everything to connect with you. That means you are very valuable. You know, another hiding pattern is the Lone Ranger or the non-relational hiding pattern. 
Life is empty of deep relationships. Relational connect connections tend to be superficial or non-existent. There's no need for relationship in this hiding pattern. This person is content in non-relational settings, such as hobbies, work, project, or simply being alone. But it masks the actual void in the heart. They do not feel that they really belong. So there's no place for them except isolation. To help a person with this hiding pattern, they need people who can accept their detachment, yet at the same time, persistently invite them to deeper levels of intimacy. You know, I can really relate to this. Um, I, being an engineer, I tend to be task-oriented rather than relational. And I never experienced that close intimacy growing up. My dad was emotionally unavailable, supportive, but never said I love you, never hugged. My brothers were much older, so I didn't really connect with them. My mom had a lot of emotions, but she was very, very needy. So I never really had that growing up, so this need is a, is a definite deficit within me. Now let's read about 1 Corinthians 12. Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Even if we feel like we don't belong, that's a lie from Satan. We do belong in the body of Christ because God has put the body of Christ together and all of us are an important part of it. God even says that those of us who perceive ourselves as weaker, we are indispensable. In this letter to the Corinthians, Paul captures this progression that we're talking about we don't feel like we belong, so we hide. After a while, the hiding pattern allows our attachment muscle to become weak. Then we begin believing the lie that we don't need other people. So we live isolated lives that leave us disconnected and we feel like he wrote here, I don't need you. You know, this, this realization for me has prompted me to intentionally be, begin reaching out to build this type of attachment and relational, emotional bond that, that I desperately need and not believe the lie anymore. Another hiding pattern is the rescuer hiding pattern. They take responsibility for the emotional need of others. They tend to be warm and caring, very active in church and volunteer opportunities. The nature of their relationships, however, is overwhelmingly one way. Difficult for them to receive love or comfort from others. They avoid their own needs because it's too terrifying. Or they were taught growing up that having genuine needs was whiny or weak. By caring for others, they are, in a sense, nurturing parts of themselves in others. So is it okay to be needy? I mean, we all have needs. But depending on how you were raised in your life experiences, allowing yourself to express those needs can be difficult. Raphael had learned to overwhelm people with his aggressive can-do attitude. Since he was a highly resourceful person, it was easy for him to hide his loneliness and sadness behind his talent. As Raphael began getting help, the isolation he had felt at not being able to have needs started to disappear. He asked friends for feedback when they saw him retreating to his old patterns. As his attachments deepened, 
his reactionary behavior diminished greatly. Robin was raised to never complain about her pain. To have genuine needs was to be whiny. Over time, denying her own needs became hatred for having needs, which she then projected onto others. She believed that people should be more responsible for themselves. Robin was disturbed by her own extremely negative reactions to the poor and homeless in her city. Walking past a homeless person on the street, she would, she would find herself thinking, get a job, why don't you? Horrified, she would ask God to change her heart, but the hostile thoughts kept reoccurring. She needed to learn that having genuine needs is normal. Edward has an MBA, family, and a promising career. Growing up, he saw his parents being locked in a perpetually polite but simmering war with each other. It made Edward uncomfortable with silence in relationships. To ease the tension, he learned how to invent bright, interesting topics which made him popular at parties and church functions. His light, distracting manner helped prevent his parents' hostility from flaring into open combat. Talking became Edward's way of controlling closeness at a manageable level, but he developed a problem with cocaine. He would binge on cocaine rather than having a chronic use problem because his verbalization skills were not enough to deal with his losses and failures in life. Edward said, Nobody on earth knows this part of me. I've spent 27 years keeping people just close enough. It's taken so much time and energy that I haven't had anything left over to try to be close. You know, when we hide the time and energy that we need to spend in loving and being loved is diverted. It's, instead, it's channeled into maintaining our isolation. So do you have a hiding pattern? If you do, view them as a road map to your own developmental needs. The hiding is there to protect a legitimate God-designed part of our soul that needs to develop and mature. If the hiding pattern exists for a long period of time, then we can begin to believe the lie that this part of our soul does not exist, which results in our living as if that lie were true. Now let's read in Genesis 2 verses 8 to 10 as we close up this module. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. You know, Adam was hiding because he was afraid. Our fears are often the reason we don't want to take the risk of re-engaging and developing deep, loving attachments which would develop lasting emotional bonds. It's risky to re-engage and begin to intentionally develop these connections and attachments as God designed us to have. Is the risk worth it for you? God thinks so. He took the risk for Adam and for you, and so we should do the same. This concludes this module on the attachment hiding. The next module looks at another part of our soul called separateness and what that need is all about. Stay with us on this journey.